many students tell me they they are distracted uh, they read for 5 minutes they are distracted their thought is somewhere else and then they become depressed and then they toss off every depressed person will slip into sleep doze off and then after one hour i understand i did not study at all you waste time and what happens you become more and more depressed every now and then say first before you open the book and um, before you open the book you you raise your heart up to jesus and tell jesus lord i am opening my book i am reading for the next 15 minutes i am going to read and give me your light the holy spirit is the spirit of understanding spirit of light give me your light i want to read for the next 15 minutes after 15 minutes well a moment a moment i tell my god thank you you gave me understanding to read for 15 minutes whatever i read i want to remember holy spirit is the spirit of memory remember jesus said the holy spirit will remind you everything spirit of memory and once again lord the next 15 minutes i'm going to read give me understanding give me understanding and thus you sanctify your study your study becomes efficient and effective because what is study you will keep in your mind every now and then raising your heart and mind to god i have a friend he's a footballer he tells me father when i go for important matches i take my girlfriend with me I asked him what's your girlfriend doing in the football field he said no father she would not be in the field she would be sitting there on the gallery i would know where she sits every now and then i will look at her and she will look at me and i will smile and she will smile i will wink and she will wink and all that love will flow into my heart and all that love will become power in my heart and will flow into my foot and then the kick will be very strong praise lord hallelujah hallelujah now this young man is not looking at his girlfriend all the time If he's looking at the girlfriend all the time there's no game there's no really love he's actively engaged in the game he's playing and yet every now and then a look a smile a wink and that makes him feel the power of love i'm playing for my girl the girl is watching and he said I'm never tired of playing when my girlfriend is there on the gallery. I'm never tired of playing. Why are we tired of study? Why are we tired of our work, our office work? Why are we tired of the things that we do? Not because we are physically tired, but because we are mentally tired. Because we don't know whom we are doing it all. we have a friend our friend jesus and he is always watching is always in the know of everything that happens to us a friend who has done for us more than any friend has done for any other friend what he did for us he died for us to save us to fill our hearts with great joy and matthew 10:30 he said i'm always there for you always there our friend jesus even a hair falling down from our head he counts it all and again he said i'm 
I'm turning everything to your good. Romans 8, 28. For those who love God, God turns everything to their good. And He's always there by my side. I will never leave you alone, He said. John 14, 18. I will never leave you alone. And Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. 6 I will never leave you. Whoever may abandon you, whoever may forsake you, I will never forsake. I will never leave you. Our friend, our Jesus, he's real, more real than anyone. He's present, really present than anyone present to us. He's not an absent God. He's a God present to us, to every emotion in our hearts, to every experience of our life, to every sadness in our mind, to everything that happens to us, is always present to us. This is our God. And we want to be present to Him. We want to raise up our hearts and our minds to Him every now and then, and thus make our life a continuous prayer. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. And for this, we need to begin our day with prayer. How do we begin our day? We need to begin our day with prayer. Every, the first thing in the morning, you wake up and you look at the face of the Lord. Psalm 34. Look at Him and your faces will be radiant. We, look, we wake up in the morning tired. Tired and often tense and anxious for the day unfolding. And we need to look at the face of Jesus and tell the Lord, manifest your face to me and praise him. It is when we praise God that the face of God remains clear to us. The God of Israel resides in the praises of his people. And that means God will manifest his face to us in praising so first thing in the morning, as soon as you wake up, sit there or stand up there or, or kneel down wherever at your bed and praise God and see the face of God. All the tiredness, all the anxiety, all the sadness, all the tension will vanish. After praising God, take the Bible. Now this book. This book, the Bible, the most important book ever written. Parents, as soon as your children can read and write, buy a copy of the Bible and give them. You are giving them a treasure. You are giving them life. Buy a copy of the Bible and give them and read the Bible. Read the Bible every day. One chapter, but slowly, prayerfully meditating, dwelling on every word. As you read, you begin to you begin to feel some words, some verses standing up in bright light and dwell on that. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My dear sisters and brothers, I was speaking about the morning prayer, read the Bible. And after reading the Bible, Offer the whole day to Jesus. Wherever you may have to go on that day, whatever you may have to do on that day, whomever you may have to meet on that day, whichever problem you may have to solve on that day, offer it all to Jesus and wait for the Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, do not leave me alone. Come and fill me and pray. A simple prayer. Anoint me with the Holy Spirit. Let your power come upon me. And then begin the day. You're beginning the day, day in the power of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then, my dear brothers and sisters, family prayer. A family that prays together, stays together. And that means, if you're not staying together, you're not praying together. The one power that will unite us as a family, as a fellowship, is prayer. And all of you must take initiative to begin family prayer, 
where family prayer is and to strengthen daily family prayer where family prayer is gone weak and if all the family members are here today you must at some time today come together and decide on a time a time for family prayer and keep it decide on that whichever time if everybody of the family will be there evening is the best time but then if in the evening all the family members are not there some other time but sometime during the day you must come together as a family in the presence of god tell god every day this particular time 7 to 7:30 i am there in your presence make an appointment with jesus and jesus will be there my dear young people i am challenging every one of you you take initiative for the family prayer and your future will be bright hallelujah 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 family prayer all coming together praising god together you can use those hymns we sang here and or any other hymns sing together after singing together open the family bible and read and throw the bible in an important place in your family take it and read one reads and everyone listens to and after reading the family bible thank god for the graces god has given you on that day every day we receive so many blessings of god now read them before god and praise god for them and after that after that offer all the intentions of the family there could be um someone sick in the family pray for a sick person there could be something going wrong a financial problem offer it to god offer it to god the young man could be going for an interview pray for him pray for her the kid could be going for exam pray for the kid let all the needs of the family come together in prayer and all the major decisions of the family are to be taken together during family prayer often there is a financial crisis the father of the family knows this and he keeps it a secret but then since he keeps it a secret he is worried upset angry shouting all the time the wife is wondering what is happening what is happening he does not share his problem with the wife and she is upset and the children are upset no no whatever problem there is take your family into confidence and share everything with the family you know one day i was visiting a family and the family was in prayer it was late in the evening and um, the father of the family invited me to join the family prayer i was sitting with them in prayer and i heard the small kid praying a oh god give me an elder sister i was wondering what the kid was praying for an elder sister soon i realized the the son the elder son of the family was getting married and there were three proposals from the families of three girls and the father of the family explained all the three proposals to the whole family the family together was making the decision who should be coming into that family as a new member of the family that all the young men and all the young girls know this your marriage should not break your family the girl who comes in is not only your wife she is a uh, a daughter to their parents she is also a sister to the other siblings so she should be coming in as a decision made by the whole family and let this be known to everyone you know what's happening often a boy loves a girl a boy loves a girl mobile phone love sms love 
and the love affair is going on in full swing. Nobody knows this. Slowly, the dad comes to know. The boy, the temperature is high. Fever, love fever. And he wants to know, who is this girl? And he comes to know from the mobile phone, the same number uh, coming up all the time. Uh, no, not that girl. The father puts the food down. Often fathers put the food down on the wrong places. No, I will never allow you to marry her. A big contention of the dad. And the son is waiting for the dad to change. The dad is waiting for the son to change. Nobody is in a mood of changing. And so the son is tired of waiting. He decides to run away with the girl. What else to do? By the time the girl is run away with somebody else. A lot of running is taking place these days. A very wrong way. The clapping surely tells me you understand the lesson from this story. And, and you will let not your marriage break your family. The marriage is the decision of the whole family. You could fall in love, there's no problem. But then tell your mother, tell your father. The first person you must, tell it, you must be telling is your dad and mom. I love this girl. I love this boy. Take your parents into confidence. One thing, let all of us know. It is your parents. It is your parents who love you the most. Who know you the most. Who understand you the most. And therefore, take your family into confidence. Let it be a decision taken by the whole family together. And end the family prayer with the rosary, rosary, a very simple prayer, but a magnificent prayer. There are three types of prayer merging into rosary. First, rosary is a vocal prayer. All the members of the family are reciting together. The voices are rising up to God in unison. And what are we reciting? The word of God. And the word of God, which is of great importance. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with you. These are the words that stand at the beginning of our salvation history. When God wanted to save humankind, God sent the angel to Mary of Nazareth. And these are the words the angel uttered to Mary. And then what Elizabeth said to Mary... Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. It's a vocal prayer reciting the word of God together. And then, it is also an intercessory prayer. We are asking Mother Mary to pray for us. Pray for us now. Now, whatever the need is, whatever the problem is, we offer it to Mother Mary. And we're asking her to pray at the moment of our death. Ah, a very important moment of our life, perhaps the most important moment of our life when we enter into eternity. Intercessory prayer. Mother Mary is the most powerful intercessor. John chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. There was a problem at Cana. Wine failed. Nobody could help. Everyone was confused and helpless. That's when Mother Mary saw the situation. And she, she turned to Jesus. They have no wine. She was interceding, praying before God, her son, to do a miracle. And she was preparing the whole family for the miracle. And the miracle took place. Mother Mary, the most powerful intercessor. And the rosary is also a contemplative prayer. So, vocal prayer, intercessory prayer, and contemplative prayer. Because we are contemplating on the mysteries of our salvation. The joyful mystery, luminous mystery, sorrowful mystery, and glorious mystery. Jesus is walking through. You experience the presence of Jesus in your heart, in your family. And thus, early 
morning we begin the day united with Jesus. All the day we are united with him. And at the end of the day, we are united with the family, the family united with God. And that's when we are anointed with the Holy Spirit. All the time we are able to experience that anointing in union with the Lord. 